ના સીઈઓ અને એમડી ફોરેન હેરિસ આપણી સાથે જોડાઈ ગયા છે સર વેલકમ એન્ડ ફર્સ્ટ ઓફ ઓલ કોંગ્રેચ્યુલેશન્સ ઓન બમ્પર લિસ્ટિંગ વોટ ઇઝ યોર મેસેજ ફોર ધ ઇન્વેસ્ટર્સ Well, first and foremost, I'd like to extend a, uh, a very big thank you to the, uh, to the investors for, uh, for the trust and the confidence that has, uh, has been extended in Tata Technologies. We are very humbled and, uh, and gratified by the, uh, the confidence that, uh, that's been extended in, uh, in the team at Tata Technologies and, uh, and the potential that, uh, that our company represents. You know, we're going to do everything that we can to sustain that trust and confidence and uh, and provide a uh, a healthy return for all investors okay sir and now sir after this uh, expectations are running high and uh, now from investors so do, so do you think uh, you'll be able to maintain high growth rates ahead well i i, I fully expect our uh, our company to continue the momentum that's uh, that's been established uh, i think the uh, the erd market here in india is uh, is set to uh, to continue the momentum that's been established we think that we're in a very good position particularly in terms of automotive aerospace transport construction and heavy machinery we think that those industries are pivoting as uh, as the world uh, moves towards autonomous driving towards connected services uh, towards alternative propulsion systems and shared mobility we think we're at the forefront of uh, of the market as it pertains to um to the technology shift and we think that um that that's going to provide tremendous tailwinds around which we'll continue to grow okay so uh, do you see strong traction in the overseas for ev and domestic markets uh, especially for jlr well we certainly expect not only uh, strong traction from jlr but we expect strong traction across uh, all of our customers both the traditional oems like jlr but also the new energy vehicle companies we are uh, working very closely with companies like Winfast and uh, and Neo and companies like Rivian in the in the United States and uh, and we believe that uh, that the innovation that is being undertaken by those organizations will continue to provide Tata Technologies with the experience that will be relevant across both segments of our customer portfolio we're also investing in uh, in not only IP but also the capacity that the industry needs and so we think that the industry's pivot towards electrification and all sorts of alternative propulsion systems will provide tremendous demand for the growth that we are planning to deliver okay sir so now uh, let's talk about the group as a contributor uh, what is the overall revenue contribution from tata group well the uh, the revenue uh, 10 years ago um from Tata Group constituted the majority of our services you know we were focused almost exclusively upon delivering value specifically to Tata Motors and uh, and to JLR you know this last year Tata Motors and JLR represented at an aggregate level uh, revenue level less than 33% of our overall revenue mix so we've diversified uh, ha- at a tremendous clip uh, outside of uh, of the group we continue to focus strategically upon our anchor customer relationships with uh, again specifically Tata Motors and uh, and JLR but our business outside of the group is growing at a much faster rate okay sir and sir now for on uh, in terms of revenue uh, the steady uh, state of uh, revenue growth uh, fi21 and uh, fi22 uh, was affected by covid so not considering that uh, for financial year 23 was 23% uh, so while h1 uh, fi24 was 28% so is 25 to 30% is your long term revenue run rate do you provide any guidance well we we don't we don't provide revenue guidance and so i'm not going to comment spe- on specifics but what i will say is that um that the ERND market is uh is growing uh, globally the contribution from India continues to grow at a faster rate than the overall market we are number 1 in uh, in the automotive engineering service uh, provider space here in India we think that that positions our company extremely well and so we are planning to uh, to take uh, full advantage of uh, of the market position the capabilities that we've got and the customer relationships that we've uh, we've worked hard to build okay sir so now uh, after revenue about margins uh, margins have been around 18 to 19% do you see any improvement going uh, going ahead in margins 
I think that um, the, the quantum leap improvement that we've seen over the last three, uh, three years is likely to slow down. You know, our, our margins uh, some three, four years ago were about 16.5%. As you said, um, last year we, uh, we delivered 18.6%. Uh, we think there's incremental improvement in margins uh, over the next couple of years, and our North Star is somewhere between uh, 20 and 21%. Uh, and so that's what we are building our, uh, our business plan around. That's what we are cascading uh, operating KPIs um, into the organization against. And we're fully confident that, um, that, those, uh, that those targets can be realized. Okay, so uh, next question will be on Aerosol's business. Uh, do you think a strong growth will be possible in the future as India focuses on local production and tie-ups? Uh, we really do. Um, we're very, very excited about the, uh, the aerospace business. We were impaneled by Airbus some 18 months ago. Uh, we've, uh, we've opened offices in Toulouse and Hamburg. We've, uh, we've aligned our IT systems with, uh, with Airbus. We've gone through all sorts of accreditations in the last 18 months. And, uh, and we've built up a sizable order book. And we expect to start to discharge that as we move towards the end of this fiscal year. And we'll certainly see a significant increase in, uh, in the business that we do with, uh, with Airbus uh, next year. We also are, are very excited about the investments that the Tata Group are making in aerospace. The acquisition of Air India, the, uh, the uh, acquisition of, uh, of 470 single aisle and wide body aircraft by Air India is affording the group a great deal of influence. That's providing tailwinds for Tata Technologies. And, uh, and we certainly expect to intersect with, uh, with that and build out our aerospace business. If you look at demand globally, you know, India is, uh, is really going to increasingly provide more and more demand for, uh, for this country. I think that that will, uh, will require infrastructure investment, particularly in and around aircraft assembly capabilities and, uh, and things like MRO uh, capabilities. Tata Technologies has skills. And, uh, and talent that are relevant in, uh, in those respective areas. And so we fully expect not only to, uh, to build out the relationship with, uh, with Airbus, but build out our aerospace business. And increasingly, I think much of that will be, uh, will, will be driven by demand that is centered on, uh, on the requirements here in India. Okay, so at, uh, next on commercial vehicles segment, do you think electrification will drive the growth? Well, I, I think that there, there will certainly be a pivot towards alternative propulsion systems. I think electrification will play a part. I also think um, hydrogen fuel cells, uh, CNG, will also play a, uh, a part. And so we're building capabilities across the, uh, the various uh, use cases that are likely to be relevant in the commercial truck uh, business. Uh, I think as, uh, as e-commerce continues to, uh, to grow at an exponential rate, that's going to gr drive significant traction in the commercial uh, truck um, um, uh, markets, not just here in India, but, uh, but globally. And we're very, very excited about the contribution that we can make to the growing requirement that we expect in, uh, in that area. Okay, sir. And sir, lastly, uh, there are many opportunities in high tech and medical equipment. So uh, when do you uh, think you will enter into? Well, we think that there are adjacent opportunities outside of the three verticals that we have uh, we've prioritized. You know, we certainly think that the relationships that we are establishing with, uh, with the chip manufacturers as it pertains to software-defined vehicles, we think that, uh, that that provides us with a platform from which we can attack the high-tech um, uh, area. We also think that, um, that our knowledge of how to manage a regulated um, market, you know, such as we've had to do in, uh, in aerospace, positions us uh, with capability process and digital capability that's relevant to the medical equipment space. So we think that there's skills that we have that are fungible into those verticals. And going forward, we will uh, we'll certainly be looking to, uh, to identify opportunities that are relevant to the skill sets that we've got. And so one more uh, last question. In what way uh, is your business model different from KPIT, which is also a pretty much a pure play auto ERD? 
Yeah, Tata Relaxi is a great company, and uh, and we are very proud of our association with Tata Relaxi inside of uh, of the Tata Group. But if you look at Tata Relaxi, they are traditionally focused on a very discrete um, part of the product realization value chain. Uh, they uh, they provide industrial design capabilities, but uh, but increasingly their focus is on embedded electronics and software. Whereas Tata Technologies provides end-to-end -end capabilities that we aggregate to, uh, together to provide support for the complete outsourcing, the turnkey outsourcing of complete products and specifically electric vehicles. You know, that's the, uh, the difference that matters that we represent to the market, uh, the markets that we support and will continue to build out that proposition as we move forward. Okay, thank you.